Good morning, everyone. This is Ken Adamo, Chief of Analytics at DAT. Hi, everybody. It's Ned Damon, Principal Data Scientist here at DAT. Hey, uh, this is Alex Perry, Manager of Analytics here at DAT. And thank you for joining us for our weekly COVID-19 market update. I hope everyone's staying safe uh, and not going too stir crazy at home. Um, what we wanted to do this week was do a bit of a whiteboarding session. Um, data scientists and data analysts love whiteboarding. So we wanted to kind of give you guys a peek at what we're looking at, some of the market trends and insights as they pertain to COVID-19. So jumping right into it, we are closely monitoring supply and demand, right? So uh, we're looking at our load to truck ratios. And as you can see, what a difference a couple of weeks makes. Uh, we've seen on the dry van side, the load to truck ratio come down considerably. Uh, rapidly approaching 2019 levels over the past week. Um, splitting that out, we can see that was mainly driven by a slide in demand on the right-hand side over here. But then we've also seen uh, a considerable uptick in the number of truck posts. Um, our primary supposition there is that we're seeing less demand from large contract shippers, which is flushing more capacity into the spot market coupled with higher rates. Uh, we're going to flip ahead here and look at reefer load to truck ratios. And you can see just due to typical volatility on the reefer side, uh, same trend, just a little sharper up and down movements. So we can see on the reefer side, we briefly reached a period where we were approaching 2018 levels, and we've now pretty much dove back down to 2019 levels. Again, on the load and truck posting side, you can see a very similar trend in demand. Um, and even a more pronounced trend on the truck post side for reefers. Again, same supposition as dry van. The thought here being you might see more more seasonal capacity entering the market early, uh, a couple of weeks ahead of the typical produce uptick um, than you would typically see. We always see a very strong correlation between our supply and demand activity and our rating data. So it's no surprise that dry van rates here up on the top, reefer rates here on the bottom have followed that supply and demand trend. We've seen a pronounced cresting pattern on the dry van rate side, um, an even sharper pattern on the reefer rate side. Uh, we'll get into a bit of a shorter term look here in a minute. These are seven day rolling averages, which sort of smooths out the bumps of the day of week effect. Uh, what we're kind of closely watching here is what happens in this time period, whether rates continue to fall down to 2019 levels or below, or whether we level off at some point above ahead of produce season. Same here goes for a reefer. Uh, the story is a little more clear that we're probably going to see a bit of a leveling off here before we see the seasonal uptick in produce. But I'll let our principal data scientist, Ned Damon, talk about that in a minute. Moving ahead to our shorter term look, what we see is that this dotted line here is a three day moving average. So it smooths out a little bit of the daily bumps, but not as much as the seven day. What we do is we look at this to see where rates might be headed. Um, and as you can see, a pronounced drop on the drive-in side, indicating a regression towards 2019 levels. And what we see here on the reefer side is, again, more pronounced and potentially um, dropping down below 2019 levels here in the next few days. Moving ahead, I'm gonna turn it over to Ned to talk a bit about our forecasting models and what they are projecting over the next few weeks. Ned? Hi, everybody. So this is what we kind of call the spaghetti chart. The core idea here is that we're building a bunch of different models to take into account different kinds of conditions. So first off, we have in this blue line what's happened historically. And historically here is actually not that long ago, but uh, in the pretty recent past, this chart starts in February, uh, late February of 2020. And you can see that big crest in rates that's now starting to turn around and head down. And we have a couple of different models that we're, we're throwing at this guy to see kind of what scenarios we can expect to be coming out of it. So first off, I'm going to talk to this green line here. This is the rate cast. This is our uh, flagship model. And it's really indicating kind of a slowing decline and a leveling off. So again, these are dry van uh, rates. Um, and you can see it slow sort of taper off. There's maybe a little bit of a downward trend, but overall it's it's holding fairly steady. In contrast, we have our pessimistic model, which is assuming that the downward trend is gonna persist through our forecast window. And you can see that that's uh, straight, straight on down and is um, a little grim for, for spot rates if you are the kind of person who wants a, a high spot rate. Like we don't think this is gonna happen, we're seeing more support for this than we are like at all for this. 
Yeah, no, there's definitely, there's a downward pressure. The middle here, we've got our blended model, which we do kind of a weighted average that's taking into account a differing amount through time of rate cast versus the pessimistic model, and that's in yellow. And you can see that it's doing that same pattern that the rate cast model is doing of leveling it out, but it's also got a much stronger overall downward trend even beyond the leveling out, and it's uh doesn't seem to have quite the same level of support that uh, the green rate cast model does. With that, I think we're ready for some uh, listener questions. Uh, Alex, do you wanna take some of those? Yeah, thanks, Ned. Um, sure, uh, along the similar lines of talking about these supply and demands and, and rate impacts, we have a question here from our Ask IQ inbox. Uh, do you think there's going to be higher pay rates since there are more demands? That's a very interesting question, um, and it really, unfortunately, depends. It sounds like a kind of kick the can kind of answer, but it really does. Um, if you remember, and it has been mentioned just the, in the last couple weeks, two weeks ago we were saying that rates could con continue to trend upward, and <clears throat> just now Ned showed us that the new set of data with two more weeks of information now is painting a very different picture of rates either settling down, tapering off, or kind of dropping even further. So it does depend. Um, and these numbers, we've been kind of focusing at the national level. If we hop back over to Ken's national graph here, we see that um, the just in March, the rates were going up, and now they're coming back down in April. This is not just a national trend driven by one large region. Um, what I've done here with this new visual, I have taken that year over year graph, graphed it as one line. And what I'm going to do now is plop region in here. And you can see that all of our regions for the month of April are experiencing that downward trend in these spot rates. So again, if this pattern continues, we could see them go down. If this pattern is also impacted by the rise in truck posting and drop in load posting that we have seen recently, that is another indicator that things could go down. If any of this settles down, we could see the rates also settle down and go back up or return to kind of the seasonality we might be used to for the summer. So with that, um, Ned, there was another question you wanted to go over, wasn't there? Oh, absolutely. Um, we got this an other email to our DATIQ inbox, and it asked, um, did I understand correctly that DAT is giving free access to rate view slash rate cast for the top 50 links temporarily? Um, and the answer to that is yes, uh, we are through our DAT top 50 report. Uh, Ken, do you want to talk more about that? Yeah, so we've seen a tremendous outpouring of um, requests for the DAT top 50. Uh, daily top 50. And it's really incredibly useful, right? This is a very tumultuous time. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty in the market. And it really gives you a look at the past seven days on the top 50 lanes, as well as what the next seven days will likely bring, according to our flagship um, forecasting model. So, um, you know, if you're a carrier, if you're a broker, if you're a shipper, and you want insights into what might be happening on some of the top lanes, it's a really great resource. And as Ned mentioned, um, we're offering it free of charge during the COVID crisis. Yeah, so thank you, everyone. The questions that we read today were from our DA, uh, DAT's Ask IQ inbox. If you have a question, feel free to email it to askiq at dat.com. And we will be here next Wednesday answering more of those questions. So please keep them coming. Yeah, thank you, everybody, for, for tuning in and listening to us uh, talk on your Wednesday morning, Thursday morning, whenever you're listening to it. And as a reminder that if you want us in a non-video format, all of this analysis, you can find weekly updates at dat.com slash COVID-19. That's C-O-V-I-D hyphen 19. All right. Bye, everybody. Yep, thank you. All right. Bye, everyone. Remember to thank a trucker. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>